Welcome to RPG Elite, where we put the RP back into RPG, giving you tools and tips on how to make your RPG experience more immersive and enjoyable. If this is your first time coming to the channel, I want to welcome you. And for all of the rest of you who may be returning, thank you for supporting the channel. What's up, my fellow elites? All right. Today, we are going to continue our series that I started the last time in Gamma World. We taken a deep dive into this classic RPG. What we're going to do today is make a character in first edition Gamma World. We're going back, way back, doing it old school style, y'all. So I'm going to get off of here. I'm not going to say a whole lot. But before I go, if this is something that you like, then crush the like button. Also, if this is something that's valuable to you and the content here is good for you, why don't you consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell so you'll get the notifications every time I come out with a video. And don't forget to comment below if there's something that, I don't know, trips your fancy. All right, let's get started with making our character in first edition Gamma World going way back, y'all. Let's do this. All right, well, here we are in Foundry VTT making our first character in the Gamma World series. Now, we're going to make four characters, one for each edition of Gamma World that we are going to go through, and we're going through four editions. So we're going to make four different characters. And the way I'm approaching this is unfiltered, pure. And what I mean by that is that I'm not going to mess with the rules. I'm not going to do any edits. I'm not going to do any additions. I'm going to do it straight out of the box, exactly as it is in the rules. No additives, no preservatives. This is what you get. So this is the raw experience of making a character in first edition Gamma World. Before we get started, you'll hear the music in the background. And that is from RPG Music Extraordinaire. I'm just trying to be cool to him. Michael Gelfi. This is his Patreon page. And the music that you hear in the background is the free module that is inside of Foundry. He makes some really good ambience and music for RPGs. Him and Tabletop Audio. Is it Tabletop Audio or is it Tabletop RPG? I forgot. I think it's Tabletop Audio. Um, but those two are the go-tos. These guys are really good. And I decided to kind of feature Michael's music in this video. He has no idea I'm doing this. I'm not doing this because I'm getting anything out of it. He, ha he has no clue. I'm doing it because the guy has good stuff and because this is what we do at RPG Elite. We give you tools and tips to make your RPG experience more immersive and enjoyable. And trust me, if you go and you get some of Michael's stuff, it's going to make your RPG experience more enjoyable. Go support him check him out if you're in foundry check out his free module give it a try some good stuff all right let's jump back into the character creation here first thing we need to do for mirabaldo kentuck that is how you say his name and we are going to make a pure strain human there are three types of characters you can make in the first and second edition you can make a pure strain human you can make a humanoid or you can make a mutated animal. I mentioned those in the last video describing them. Now, there are others that you can make. However, you won't be able to make them until third edition. You can make them in first and second edition, but they are only for NPC purposes, which are trees, plants, funguses, things like that. Yes, you can be a fungus in Gamma World. Check that out, right? So if you haven't gone and seen the other video, click on the card right here. Go watch that video. Get your full overview of what you're about to get into and then come back here and watch the character creation. So I'm going to make a pure strain human from the pull down menus right at the top. So I don't really need to do anything. I'm going to go to the next one, which is Cryptic Alliance. These are little secret organizations and uh, 
cultures per se, which are pushing forth a belief system or ideology in this new world. I'm not going to go through all cryptic alliances because there are 13 of them. I'm not going to go through all of them. They will have a separate video. So I'm just going to put in the one that I have chosen and the one that the game kind of throws out there if you're just starting out. And they're called the Restorationist. So let me go ahead and put this in there. Restoration. I think I forgot the O. Restorationist. Okay. So that is what we are going to do there. Let's move down to the abilities. You have six abilities, three physical, three mental. Let's go over them really quick. P.S. Physical strength. Want to push, want to pull, want to break, want to lift something. That is what you're going to use. P.S. DX. Obviously, for those of us who've been playing role playing games for any amount of time, we automatically know what that is. Nimbleness, uh, accuracy, agility, that kind of thing. Next is Constitution. And those of us who've been playing a real long time know what that one is. Constitution. That is your physical resilience, your fortitude, your physical toughness. So those three comprise your physical abilities. Now, next to those, you have here a mod. For every point that you have over a certain number, you will get a bonus. And if you go too low, you will get a penalty. I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's go with the mental abilities. Mental abilities, MS is mental strength, which for all intents and purposes is willpower. You have intelligence, which is self-explanatory, and you have charisma, and that determines how well your character interacts with other NPCs, as well as how many followers and hirelings they can potentially attract to themselves, because that's the thing in first edition Gamma World. Okay, so there are two ways to make characters. You roll three six-sided dice six times for all of the abilities and then put them wherever you want. However, if you want to push the odds in your favor, they do have another way. You can roll four six-sided dice and then keep the highest three. So your abilities are going to run from three to 18. Let's go back to that modifier. If you roll over a 15, every point over, you get a bonus. So if you roll a 16, get a plus one, 17 plus two. So you get a maximum of plus three modifier if you roll over a 15. However, the opposite is true as well. If you roll under a six, you will get a penalty. So if you roll a five, minus one, four, minus two, and so on. So the max you can have in your penalty is a minus three. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and roll those four dice and keep the highest. I already got a macro made because I'm prepared like that. And I am curious to see what these abilities are going to be. So six times, folks, let's roll it and let's see what we can get. Eleven, not bad. You know, a little over average. I'll take it. Let's go to the next one. Okay, that one's pretty good. Thirteen, not too bad. Not too bad. Let's go to the next one. Eleven again, still in the double digits. I like having double digits. I'm not real... You know, I'm, I don't get real bent out of shape if it's not like way high up there because I can work with a character that is just a little bit above average. I can work with a character like that, even if they've got one or two stats that are low. I can still work with it. Let's do. We got three more. Wow, I got a 15. All right. That's good. Nice. OK, well, it looks like this character is turning out halfway decent. I got two more rolls. Ooh, 16 plus one bonus on wherever I put that one. And I got one more. So let's see what happens. And a 12. This is a pretty good character. All right. I've got some decent stats here. So now I'm going to see where I'm going to put all of these. So I'm going to always go from lowest to highest. So I'm going to put my 11 in my physical strength. 
and my dexterity. I am not going to make him like a combat guy. He's going to be like the talker because here's a little tip for you. Pure strain humans have more of an ability to interact well with just about any other creature in Gamma World than any other character type. So having a decent charisma, especially robots. So having a decent charisma is going to help if you're a pure strain human. So I've got, what do I do? I put 11 and 11. I got a 12. Uh, let's put that 12 in my, I'm going to put the 12 in my intelligence. All right. So I've got a 13 now. And I'm going to put the 13 in my mental strength. And I have a 15 and a 16. I am actually going to put my... Hmm, let's put my... Let's put my 16 here. I'm going to put my 16 here. Get that plus one modifier there. There we go. Put one in there. And for my constitution, I will put the 15. That's good. All right, this is a pretty good character. Pretty good character. And by the way, these notes right here, it's just, you know, if you want to put a little note in there or whatever, what the modifier does or whatever else you want to put in there. So this is a pretty decent character right here. So the next thing we need to do now that we have our stats, stat, you should say, I am going to go ahead and roll for hit points. Now, the way that you do this is you take your constitution and you roll that many dice, six-sided dice. So I'm going to roll 15, count them now, 15 six-sided dice. This is going to be interesting. Roll them. 55. 55. All right. So let's go with 55 here. There we go. Hit points. We're ready to go there. Great. Let's move on to physical and mental mutations. Oh, can't move on to physical and mental mutations. Why? Because pure strain humans do not have any physical or mental mutation. So we're just going to have to move on to get our gear. But before we get our gear, we need a little Skrilla. Now, in the first edition, they don't give you a way to have any starting money. Like they explain what Domars and gold are, which is the currency of Gamma World. They explain that, but they don't tell you how you're going to get some starting Skrilla. So what I did is went to the second edition and see how they did it because I kind of figured that they fixed that and they did. You roll four four sided die and then you multiply it by 10 and that's how much you start with. For this, I'm going to do the same thing. However, eh, nah, I'm, I'm just I'm going to do the same thing here. I got a macro down here anyway. We're just going to find out how much money we get to start with because I buy everything. That's just how you got to do it. I'll show you this in a second. Let's roll and see how much money that Mirabaldo gets, though. 120. Ooh, I knocked that one out of the pot. King, pretty nice. That is a really nice one. That's that's a good roll. That's a decent roll right there. So I have 120 gold is what it's going to be. So 120. That's nice. Great. So now I have to go and buy my gear. First thing I have to buy, I'm going to go and buy my weapons. So I'm going to go to my journal here. And I have an equipment table that's going to give me all the prices. So as you can see here, the currency is Domars and gold, and you can read up about that if you happen to get the game. But it looks like every standard cut and thrust weapon is 10 gold. And I think I know what I want. Uh, I've got an idea. I knew what I wanted in terms of weapons. I'm going to give him a dagger. And I'm going to give him, where is that? I'm going to give him a short sword and I'm going to give him a crossbow. All right. 
There is no encumbrance in this game. So everyone is a mule. But, you know, your GM is obviously, if they're good, they're going to be like, okay, we're going to keep this within limits. But there are no weights in the first edition. So I'm just going to be a little bit reasonable with the things that I'm getting here. But so far, what I've got these two, these are 20, and then the crossbow is how much? 20. So I just spent 40. Let me go ahead and take that away. And I've got 80 gold left. So let me go and get some armor now. Armor is kind of expensive. If you look at armor here, armor is 60, 60 gold. Wow, man, if I spend 60 gold, I'll be down. I don't think I want to, mm, maybe I do. I think I am. I'm just going to take the plunge. I'm going to take the plunge. Let me go up to armor. And um, if I get armor, it's going to be 60 pretty much no matter what. You might as well get the best. So I'm going to get a leather armor and shield. I didn't do all of the armor that you could get because they got the high tech one. And I only got it to where you can get to the middle. Right. And then the rest you have to discover, you know, you got to, you know, you got to have them discover something. Right. So I'm going to do leather armor and shield and uh, whoops. I'm gonna go back here i'm gonna take that off i'm gonna take that off too uh hello okay and we're gonna go with leather armor and shield armor class five lower armor class better armor lower armor class better armor and uh that's gonna cost 60 it's a little bit of a hit so i only have 20 left so it's time to get just a couple other things here if I can. And I'm going to go with first. I need some crossbow bolts. They cost two. I'm going to get 30. That's going to cost me four. I'm just clicking on stuff all over the place. Uh, that's going to cost me four. So I'm down to 16. But let me get those crossbow bolts. And click on that and click on some gear and click on some bolts here. Put that in my gear right here. Okay, I got 30 of those there we go all right what else do we need well i need rope and lantern and they just cost one a piece okay i can afford that um yeah let me go ahead and get them both get a rope get a lantern and i need some well Hmm, I might not get the oil for him, but I am going to get some food rations. And I think I'm going to call it a day right there, except with a water skin. All right, I think this is all I'm going to get. So I paid for my bolts. I'm going to get the food rations for a week, which is about four days, because these ration here is two days. So it's actually eight days. But it says here for rations, dried foods, things like that, it costs one per week, right? So the wine skin costs one as well. The rope costs one. The lantern costs one. Really? Hmm. Oh, you got to love that. All right. So I just need. Uh, I didn't put the value in there, but that's OK. Um, OK, so I got one, one, one and one. So I got four more. Um, or did I do food ration? Yeah, I did the food rations already. So I just got three more. And that goes down to 13. And I, that is it. I'm good. I'm good because all the rest of the stuff is kind of expensive. I could get some oil for my lantern, but you know what? I am going to get some oil for my lantern. Why not? And it takes it down to 10. That'll work. That's cool. Get that oil. There we go. Take it down to 10. He doesn't have a lot, but he plans on going out and doing some work for his cryptic alliance okay it looks like that we're really done here because everything else is pretty expensive so it looks like we're done with the character and that is how easy it is to make a character in first edition gamma world all right there you have it easy peasy making a character first edition gamma world 
next time we're going to get a little bit further into this. I don't know if I'm going to do mock combat or if I'm going to go and just explain another part of the system. Not sure yet, but it's going to be something in Gamma World or maybe it'll be something else. Who knows? However, if you subscribe and click the notification bell, well, then you'll know, right? Well, that's it, folks. Not too long of a video. Ah, uh, well, you know, my average. So until next time, you know what I'm going to say. Say it with me now. Happy gaming.